What's cracking everybody? I am back in my classic studio, <laughs> but my parents put this giant thing in front of it. So I just decided, hey, I'm just gonna talk this video. I wanted to do an on-screen video, but a lot of the stuff I wanted to talk about really has nothing to show. So <laughs> instead of just making, oh, yep, there's my dog Onyx just chilling. Say hi. Okay. I wanted to use a tripod too, but I don't have one with me, so. I'm failing, I know. Let's talk a little bit more about JavaScript engines and environments. Before we get started though, I wanted to give a special shout out to Dev Mountain, our generous sponsor. If you guys don't know what Dev Mountain is, it's a boot camp that basically gets you from ground zero to professional job in development. They have all kinds of courses in person and online. If you go in person, the housing is at no additional cost. And basically their goal is to help you get a career, take the concepts taught in tutorials and books and put those into real world problems and help you guys get a job. I'd really appreciate it if you check them out. Just go to their site. I'll leave a link for you in the description. Let them know I sent you and they'll give you 250 off their tuition. So check it out. Thanks. One of the problems with JavaScript that people have is they take on JavaScript and they realize the syntax, the structure and where you put semicolons and stuff is very similar to other languages. So if you guys are coming from a different language, you might look at JavaScript and be like, oh, I know how this works. But the problem is you don't because it's fundamentally different. It's fairly easy to pick up JavaScript and how it works. But if you just dive in expecting it to work exactly the same as Java or C Sharp or something, it's not. <laughs> and one of the differences is just how we execute things. Like I said in previous videos, JavaScript doesn't require us to install anything. And a lot, there's a lot of confusion on whether JavaScript is a compiled language or an interpreted language. And some of these things we're gonna talk about today. You will often hear the term engine thrown around without really explaining what it is. Well, the engine is what takes our code and executes that. So it's what makes it possible for us to make human readable code that works on a computer that doesn't understand anything. <laughs> one of the challenges with JavaScript though is that there are numerous engines. There's not just one. So for example, there is V8, which is Google Chrome's engine. There's SpiderMonkey, which is Firefox's. There's Chakra, which is Microsoft Edge. And then there's also one for Safari, I forget. <laughs> Nitro, I just looked it up. So one of the immediate challenges you're going to get with JavaScript is differences between <laughs> these engines. How does one of these engines decide how to execute your code? Well, there is a standard, a basis that these engines follow so they know how to interpret your code. And this standard is known as ECMAScript or ES. A lot of people say ECMAScript sounds like a skin disease. So a lot of people just say ES. So ECMAScript is just a standard and JavaScript is an implementation of this standard. So the browsers that want to run our JavaScript code can use ECMAScript as the basis for how to interpret the code and how to execute it. So what happens when we type this, for example? It might look something like this. We have one thing of code, and what happens is we need to execute this on numerous browsers. So this one might be Google Chrome, this might be Edge, this might be Firefox, and Safari, for example. And this is our JavaScript code. Well, in order for these to interpret our code in some kind of consistency, they're all based on a standard known as ECMAScript. Boom, yeah, my handwriting has not improved. So if these browsers are trying to adhere to some standard, oh, it's Kavi, hi. So yeah, this is probably the worst video you guys have ever seen. <laughs> but if these browsers are trying to adhere to some standard, then there has to be some kind of way to measure how close they are to matching the standard perfectly, right? So like, let's say Google Chrome is really good, but I don't know, Internet Explorer is terrible. How can we quantify that? Well, there's this test that can be used to quantify how much these different, oh, let me make a point to them, these different engines adhere to the standard. And this test is called Test 262. I know, really creative name, right? And the company or the, the thing that made this test is called TC39, because these people are really good at naming things. Honestly, those names aren't that important and you could probably forget them. Honestly, I literally just looked because I couldn't remember. <laughs> but what I'm trying to say is that this will give a percentage amount of how much these different engines follow the ECMAScript standard. But what I'm trying to say is that this will give a percentage amount of how much the engines follow the ECMAScript standard. And you can find this on Wikipedia. I'll end up showing you guys later on in this series. So these engines are part of the web browsers. So you can think of it like this. 
This is a web browser. And inside of this web browser, one piece of it is the JavaScript engine. This is what processes our code and basically makes our code do something in the browser. That browser is known as the environment. So there's an engine and then there's an environment. In other languages, you might hear the JRE, Java Runtime Environment, or CLR, Common Language Runtime. These are basically the environment or where our code is being executed. So the engine is part of that environment. But in theory, we should be able to take that engine, that core piece, and put that inside of a different environment, so no longer a web browser. And people have done that. And this is basically the birth of Node.js. This is what happened. So Node.js is a way to process JavaScript on the server side. So far, we've been processing all of our JavaScript inside of a browser. That's the environment we've been using. But in theory, we should be able to take this engine and put it somewhere else. So for example, we could have this inside of the backend server. And that is what Node.js did. So it used the Google V8 engine to basically allow us to process JavaScript, but no longer in the browser environment, but on a server environment. Yeah, basically a bunch of fancy words just to show you guys that JavaScript can be processed in different locations. And this makes it very versatile. The, the thing that processes it is the engine. The location is the environment. So a web browser or a backend server. Now the next question is, is Java compiled or interpreted? Well, if you guys don't know what that means, basically there are two categories of programming languages. This is one way you can categorize languages. Compiled, you take all your code and you compile it, meaning you transform it to something the computer can understand. And it's a one time, you just you type it or click compile and it will give you an object file or an executable that can be ran. The other side is interpreted, which will basically keep the source code and when you run it, it's going to go through that source code line by line as you're running it. When you're first starting, it's not super important to understand which is which and why, as long as you write code and it works. That's really what matters as a beginner, but it is important to know as we get into some more advanced stuff. A lot of people think JavaScript is interpreted, but it's actually more likely to be compiled. And the reason that is, is because of the engines. Let's say we download some JavaScript code from a server and it goes to our engine. The engine could try to compile the JavaScript and then just have an executable, or it could run it line by line. And I'd say it's more towards the compiling part, and it's actually something known as JIT, just-in-time compilation. And basically what this means is that the source code will be available, and right when we need to start executing it, it'll be compiled and then executed. This can help improve performance and kind of make it act like an interpreted language, but it's really being compiled. And this would explain why sometimes in JavaScript, before you start even executing your code, you might get errors in the browser because it's being compiled and it notices some issues. But the real, real important thing to know before you guys argue with me and say that, oh no, JavaScript's interpreted, or oh no, it's completely compiled or whatever, this is an implementation detail. And what that means is that this whole concept is tied with a specific engine. So if we go back up to our engine list, this engine could compile, this engine could interpret, this one could do just-in-time compilation, and this one could do who knows what, I don't know. <laughs> Meaning, when we write JavaScript, we can't rely on this side to be doing a certain thing. We, we don't know if it's gonna be interpreted or compiled or whatever. All we know is we need to execute our code and the engine is going to do something with that code. So when your friends ask you if it's compiled or interpreted, just tell them it's, it's an implementation detail and it's completely dependent on the engine and the engine can decide how to do whatever it wants to do. So this is the first time I've done a video quite like this. Hopefully it wasn't too terrible. <laughs> Curious what it's gonna look like after editing it. But thank you guys for watching. If you've enjoyed the content, really, really appreciate it. And don't forget to subscribe. I'll see you guys in the next video where we're gonna do one more video like this and then we'll get back into some hands-on stuff. So thanks guys, I'll see you then.